Got you your uh, drink over here. You should have your own channel about, you know, spending way too much time and effort and money on a uh, Nissan Sentra. Shut up. I don't need to judge. Not to be judged? Well, what is that back there? And what am I looking at? A Porsche with cooling in the front? What? Spoilers. Well, that's something you don't see every day. A water-cooled Porsche. Well, this is... Might be something of a rarity. It's a 1966 Porsche. I don't know much more about it other than one little thing. Check this out. This is not my car. And this is not my shop, but I think I can show you guys this safely. Hold that up. Come to the back right here. And there's going to be something of a surprise back here. But I don't want to show you yet because I want to touch base and tell you what's going on. So I'm over here at the shop, my son's shop. Uh, he's working on his Sentra, big surprise. He's putting a new uh, radiator in. And uh, I just happened to come down here to give him some support because he ordered the radiator, came to my house, I brought him the radiator. This Porsche right here is the owner of the shops. He's uh, one of the nicest guys I've ever met and definitely the best mechanic I've ever seen. I don't have permission to actually go through it, start this thing up, but it's such a unicorn that it's something worth showing. So let's take a look at it now that we laid the grain groundworks. I don't know too much about this, is guess what I'm saying. You uh, guys ask me questions, I'll ask the owner. As long as I don't get in trouble. You guys ready for it? So this is the ultimate monstrosity. Is it a, what is, is it a monstrosity? What is it? Piece of art. Piece of art, that is a better name. This is not a monstrosity, unless you are a, a, a huge Porsche fan, because why would you have a radiator on an air-cooled engine? But check this out. That's an LS swap. <laughs> now, I've never seen an LS swap in a Porsche before. And when my son told me about this, I said, no, you can't get an LS engine in a, in a Porsche. That's impossible because how would the transmission made up? How would, how would the engine fit? You have to have like some turnbuckle thing back ways forwards to get the, the engine hooked up to those rear wheels because there's no, absolutely no way you can get the engine and the transmission with a ha It can't be done. And yet here I am looking at it done. He took a picture, showed it to me, and I said, well, now I've seen everything. So I wish I could tell you the exact size of this engine. I don't know, but you can see it is naturally aspirated. V8. And the coolant lines go up front. I don't know how much modification they had to do on this to get this to fit in there. You can see how incredibly close this is to the front end right there. If I go down underneath. Ugh. You can see, let's see what we got right here. <laughs> I don't know. It's actually got quite a bit of space between the, uh, the crank there and the uh, the rear bumper but it's got a did you say a custom made bell bell, bell adapter uh, well it's just an aftermarket adapter i guess this is so common you can get it so it is the porsche uh, transmission hooked up to an ls engine this thing's got to fly right it even has provisions for ac I, don't see any AC lines hooked up yet. But the coolant lines that go up front, you can see them right there above that half shaft. They'll just cradle on the underside. So this is uh, pretty exciting. I wish I could take this on a drive, or at least as a passenger. You can see they made some provisions for heat this distribution on that muffler yeah those are mufflers no cats and 
He's gonna guess these are custom made headers. This is really kind of fun. It's not something you see very often in the world out in the at whatsoever. Come around up front. You can see he's got a great big huge radiator for uh this. There's the uh I guess that makes sense. There's not a big front end to get a air, good airflow, so they had to put the radiator on the angle like that. So if air has to come in, oh, you know what? It goes through the radiator and back out down underneath, doesn't it? Oops. Yeah, there you go. So you've got a pretty good heavy-duty fan on that. That's really quite impressive. Now I've seen everything. At least shortly I will. So there it is, guys. So there it is, guys. A 1966, a Porsche with an LS engine. Water-cooled, naturally aspirated setup. I think we've safely seen everything. Now I've been told. Is that a 55? We got a Bel Air here with original factory inge fuel injection on it, but I won't touch that one. Touch it, do it, please. Ah, forbidden. Ooh, open that's nice. Hood. My son says to open the hood. Is that true? Hmm? But it's too pretty for a guy like me to even pretend to do something like that. Open it. Ah, you're right. It even has a badging right there. Fuel injection. Wow. That's pretty rare. It's so scary. Uh, most people don't want to touch it because it's so finicky. Well, let's see. And I don't blend. If I'm to read this sign right here. Fuel injected. 700 R4 transmission. Do you think it's really for sale? Oh. It's been sitting for quite some time. This is a pretty good restoration right here. Bel Air. Open the hood, man. Open the hood. Oh. I've never even seen that feature before. I'm amazed by everything now. Look at that. What are you amazed by? It's got a, a, a pop-down gutter on it. So when you open the door, it's spring-loaded. Think it's factory? It's gotta be. Look at that, it engages right there. I'm not sure it's a gutter more than it is a seal. That's pretty ingenious. Probably the first ingenious thing that we've ever done. First and last. Whew, there's so much metal in here. It's gorgeous. Well, I think it's the first thing you're going to hit when I get on a car crash. Well, the only thing I don't want to hit is the door right here on the left. Do it. No! Look at that. They, they had to have upgraded this to disc in the rear. They couldn't have had disc in the rear in 57. Especially with leaf springs. It's got to be a kit. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I don't know what the gear ratio is in the back. I don't know anything about these things. They did a Ooh, a drop kit on it too, huh? Ugh. Makes sense. It is sitting pretty low. All right. Let's take a look here. Ooh. All right, so what I've learned is fuel injection was introduced in 57. That's standard equipment on a... Corvette and was an option on many of the other GM products. Uh, this is a, something of a rare thing. 
and some people didn't like them and changed them back to a carburetor. This is what was called a ramjet air fuel injection and from the get from what I can gather those little uh, ports right here that's a fuel uh, injector. So it looks like there's four so it is multi-port. Uh, this is the air intake. The air stays separate from the mixture until all the way down at the bottom of the manifold right there. So that's a lot to learn in very little time. It's a very interesting take on fuel injection. I wish I could explain a lot more about it. I'll assume that it wasn't very reliable and wasn't very great since this is a 57 and it didn't become standard equipment in our uh, in, uh, vehicles until the mid 80s, it feels like, to the 90s. I don't know. Whew, this is a one beautiful car, Thomas. It's quite a nice, nice day to just spend the day with my son looking at cars. So, I guess what I'm saying, Thomas, technically this is an LS engine, isn't it? Sure looks like it with that timing cover. Sure looks like it with that water pump. Uh-huh. Sure. So, <laughs> if I put these two videos together, we basically have a strange link between... 1966 Porsche and a 1957 Bel Air using pretty much the same power. Now I think we've seen everything. Well guys, so there you have it. An accidental journey into two what I would call unicorns in the uh, automotive world. I'm not much of a car enthusiast, but I can appreciate beautiful Creations and cars. What? I guess there's a Mach 1 in there too. Do you guys want to see that too? <sighs> no, I don't generally have a uh, car. This is not a car channel because I, I call myself an expert, but I don't know everything. It's just like I said, I can appreciate interesting things. You know, is this what I'm supposed to be looking at over here? This blue guy? Oh, okay, good. Thank you. Much more than uh, your average mechanic. But uh, I can definitely appreciate these things. So this is not the Mach 1. This is a inline, wow, it's got an inline 6 on it, right? I don't know what year this one is. I'm sure somebody will. But look at that. Something it's convertible. 60. What? Something 60. Something 60, huh? That's about my knowledge, too. But here we go. Here's the Mach 1. I'm sure there's lots of guys out there saying, Oh my gosh, please do something that I want you to do. And I'm not going to know what to do because I can't hear you guys. Do I dare open it? To the... There you go. Ooh. Wow. If you look closely, look. It actually has functional air induction cowls on, on, on the hood, not just for decoration. Yeah, I mean, they were decoration, but we made it. They were decoration? This is uh, aftermarket vacuum actuated? No, that's why it looks so nice. Oh, I just thought they took care of stuff. Well, I think... Uh... Something well, I mean, it's a Ford, so you still have to fix it every day, right? That's why it's in uh, the shop. I think if I remember correctly, they had, like, restored this thing, like, in the 80s. The 80s? That's but, quite a decade to, to say. And then it was uh, stored away. Well, that's not a bad time to restore it, because you would have been forced to stay with fairly uh, uh, standard parts. And not go crazy with... Uh, technology and start doing all sorts of uh what you would call hacks so wow. i don't know i assume these are original numbers on it 
Wow, look at that dash. This definitely was stored away. That dash isn't even cracked. It's got a nice color scheme too. Wow, we. I don't know anything about this other than it's pretty. Tell me something about it. What year is it? I don't know. All right, I'm going to have to do effort now. It's going to be hard to drive this thing. All right, so this is a 1973 Mustang Mach 1, and that's a heavy hood to do with one hand. I don't know why it's in the shop. I noticed that it's missing its steering wheel, so I assume there's something with steering that they're doing on it. That's as smart as I get, but they did uh, look like they upgraded the headlights to be nice, bright. Uh... Are those uh, LEDs? I think those are LEDs. I'm sorry. Jeez. I don't, I don't want to touch anything because I don't know what is that power steering f cooler and it's definitely naturally aspirated I know everybody wants to know We've got AC looks like a I don't know if it's new it's, uh, it's been, yeah it's been converted to 134 I don't even know what size engine that is. I don't know. I don't, I'm not much of an engine guy. I was too familiar with my 351 Modify that I had in my Bronco that I don't want to work on Ford engines anymore, which is ironic since I ended up having to work on a V10. What was that, 6.8? There it is, they uh, stuck with the looks like drum brakes in the back. I know everybody wants to know what the gear ratio is back here, but I do not know. I don't think it looks brand new, but I can't imagine. Lots of brand new stuff under here. 73, I can see the 73 styling in it. It does seem to harken more to a the same era Lamborghini styling. It's hard to say that this and those are both Mustangs. It's kind of like the Mustang Mach E electric Mustang. I don't know. I can't say I see uh, a Mach E a Mustang uh, guiding or uh, design motifs from uh, this real Mach one. What do you think, Thomas? I don't, I don't see any resemblance between a Mach 1 and a Mach E. Well, I don't think for Mach E took any inspiration from that. It took all inspiration from the real Mustang. Well, then why do they call it a Mach? Because Mach 1 has been a trim level of Mustangs before. Uh huh. They should have called it the Galaxy. It, it, uh, it, it already ends with an E. And it has an X. So it would have appealed to, uh, you know, electric boys. This is a nice Mustang, too. You know what? I can't spend all day just going through cars. Nobody watches my channel for cars. Or do they? Probably not. Probably not. All right. So there you go. This time for sure I'm done doing a car show at my son's shop. What about that nice Dodge, 90s Dodge right there? What 90s Dodge? The Dodge Ram, the one in the middle. Three Dodge trucks, you really think that's going to compare to a, a 66 Porsche um, with, a, with an LS engine on it? Excuse me, uh, a 57 Bel Air with a with fuel, uh, fuel injection on it? A, a 73 one Mach 1? You. you want me to look at Dodge trucks? What do you mean? You can slap a historic plate on that. It's in the same group. Well, you know, it's got a Cummins of a uh, straight six in it. It doesn't. It's got a Magnum V8. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> Stop interrupting my vehicles. No more cars. All right, I need to get back to work, fin have him finish this, uh, this radiator so I can go home and try to enjoy my weekend.
I really appreciate uh, working with them. If you guys enjoy these videos, I really appreciate you following along in this journey. And uh, man, I didn't expect to see three what I would call unicorns in the wild this day. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Well, guys, so there you have it. This was not sponsored by uh, Rustic Wrench here in uh, Apache Junction, Arizona. But they're really good guys, and they do great work. I couldn't recommend them more for any sort of automotive repairs. Uh, I, they've helped me out of a number of problems, and I've appreciated all the help they've given me. Thanks a lot, Thomas. Thanks a lot, Mike. Take it easy.